So crucially, we're supposed to be defining all of the arithmetic operations <coughs> of the tiny machine, and uh, we get handed what do we get handed, and XOR, not NAND, and more. <coughs> um, so if your approach is just using those uh, six components, start immediately to build the circuits that you're asked for, then you are in trouble. Uh, the crucial task for you is to figure out what intermediate components might possibly be handy to solve this sort of a problem. If you're trying to sort of, if you're trying to work at the level of the primitive gates, it's not going to happen for you. So let's see what would be useful. Well, we know that sooner or later uh, we're going to have to implement add with carry, and that means we're going to need to build the appropriate adding circuit. What do we build adding circuits from? Well, half adders. Uh, <coughs> Full adders, right? If you've got two, two bits to add and a carry in, you want a full adder. So let's start. I've already done it um, by building a half adder and a full adder. Okay? Uh, so these are things you know how to do. These will be useful components uh, in our task. Okay, what else? Pretty much all of these operations update at least the accumulator. And if they update the accumulator, that means they update the flying register too. At the very least, they update the zero flag. So over and over again, you're going to need a thing that says, did the accumulator just become zero? OK, let's make one. Let's make a circuit that tests if a hexadecimal value is zero. It's going to take a hexadecimal digit going in, and it's going to have one bit coming out. So if you think through, first of all, what is the external connectivity of the stuff that you're trying to build? Okay. So now, how do we deal with uh, a hexadecimal input coming in? We have to split it up into its individual <coughs> bits. And somewhere on the top, there's a thing that does that. So I'm just going to steal that. <coughs> Paste it there. So you can see what this is a picture of. The, the, the hexadecimal wire coming in is really a bundle of four wires inside. And what we're doing is opening that bundle. So now we've got uh, the, the hexadecimal connector going up. And it, um, it feeds into uh, this bundle of four individual bit wires uh, coming down. OK. We want to test if all of these things are, well, we want to test if the hexadecimal number is zero. To test that, we'd better test if all of the individual bits are zero. And we know how to do that. We know how to build a detector. We, um, uh, we know that everywhere you want to zero, you put a not. Right, I'm going to just space this out a little bit more. Okay, and then, uh, so all of those signals will be one if we detect the zero. So now we can say, are they all one? That's just anding them all together. You don't need to, you, you can leave wires out sometimes if it's obvious what's going on. <coughs> You can see that those four knots will give four wires coming down, 
And the two amps will want four wires coming in. So uh, all CVI cares about is that you've got the right number connecting to the right number. Uh, so uh, we don't actually need to draw individual wires there. And indeed, what I'm going to do is just take that out and just for graphical niceness, move that along and then for sheer anal retentiveness, I will uh, make the two lines of equal signs the same size. I press send and you can see it tells me I've got myself an H0 uh, which takes a 4-bit bundle and gives you a single bit. I suppose we should test it. You can write a couple of tests, press send again, and you can see uh, when we put in uh, all four zeros, one comes out. When we uh, put in zero, zero, one, zero, then a zero comes out. Okay, everyone cool with that? So that's the, the key thing here is uh, that it, it's pretty easy to use this pattern to unpack hexadecimal as four bits. Okay, let's, um, let's at least start another one. Uh, uh, let's do tiny rotate left. No, rotate left. Right, first of all, read the instructions. Uh, we get uh, the flag register and the accumulator coming in, and we have to give out the new flag register and the new accumulator. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, we'll have uh, a couple of hexadecimal digits coming in. First the flag register, then the accumulator. <coughs> and the first thing we ought to do is unpack them. We're going to give out the same sort of stuff, probably a little bit further away. Okay. Now, when you're building these circuits, it's really not very easy to do it if you want to draw all of the wires in ASCII art, which is why it's useful that you don't have to. You can give signals names early in a circuit and then use those names later in a circuit. So let's do that. We're here we're going to have the halt flag, let's say the halt flag before. Here we'll have the overflow flag before, here we'll have the zero flag before, and here we'll have the carry flag before. Here we'll have uh, bit three of the accumulator before, here bit two, here uh, bit one, and here uh, we'll have bit zero. So it's good to number the bits uh, starting from zero right to left so that the bit number uh, is the logarithm of its place value. Or that's to say, uh, this bit's worth 2 to the power of 3, 8. This one's worth 2 to the 2, that's 4. 2 to the 1, that's 2. And 2 to the 0, that's the 1. Okay? So now we've got names for all the things. Uh, we can separately uh, build the bits and pieces we're going to need. First of all, let's figure out what the accumulator is going to be afterwards. Okay, so what I'm going to do is build something that packs up to give the accumulator. <coughs> So this is the whole accumulator afterwards. And then let's just think 
What does rotate left do? Uh, well, it moves everything one place to the left and it shoves the old carry flag in on the right. <coughs> so that means we have A to B going down into that position, A1 B going down into that position, uh, A0 B going down into that position, and the carry flag before going down into that position. Yeah? All right. So now, the easy part of the question is to get the accumulator out. That's just AA going out the second output. The tricky part is to figure out what goes into the flag register. Okay. So we do this one at a time. What's going into the halt flag? How well does rotate left cause the machine to halt? No. So we'd probably better send a zero in. We could do these a, a little at a time. Uh, what's going into the carry flag? A three B. A three B. The old leftmost bit in the accumulator. Okay. How about the zero flag? Well, we've just built a device that tells us whether we, uh, a hexadecimal value is zero. So we can use that. So that would be we would just want to feed the new accumulator in there as well, the accumulator afterwards. And then we've got to think about uh, overflow. Uh, when does rotate left overflow? If you don't happen to know this, it overflows when the sign bit changes. So that's to say, if you think of rotate left as multiply by two and add the carry flag, it would be kind of weird if we multiplied a non-negative number and got a negative answer. It would be kind of weird if we multiplied a negative number and got a non-negative answer. So those situations are our overflow situation. Uh, so that's if the sign bit changes. <coughs> Okay, how do we test if two things are different? XOR. XOR. Okay, I'll tidy that up. And then which things are I'm going to just leave that to the left bit, make that bit longer. Right, so which things should we be XORing? Yes, the, the old sign bit and the new sign bit. So that's A3B and uh, A2B. Make that a little bit wide. I don't really have to put the space in there just to make sure. And then delete some stuff so that things still line up. Okay, so let's see if it likes that. Syntax error, wanted a line of components, uh, but got AA. Oh, that's my bad, that sh should have a, so to, put, to send something into a name, like I was doing all the way up top, uh, you put an apostrophe beforehand. That's to say, it's coming from above and it's going into AA. Let's try that. And now it's saying that's defined. Okay. So now we've got tiny ROL. What happens if we send in uh, these values? Uh, let's find out. Okay, and we can see 
uh, what happened there. Uh, we put in, so the flag register had the carry flag being 1, and uh, the accumulator was A, 1010, that's negative in, in 2's complement. Uh, everything, so the old 010 came out here as 010, the carry flag came in on the right, uh, the old one that was on the far left of the number ended up in the carry flag here, and because we ended up with 5, which is a positive number, when we started with a negative number, the overflow flag has also been set, but because 5 is not 0, the 0 flag remains clear. Okay? So, the message here is uh, build circuits which unpack all the bits and pieces at the top, then do some calculations in the middle, feeding the right named signals into bits of circuitry, and naming the stuff you get out. So you've got a kind of island in the middle where you do the work. And then at the bottom, all you're doing is uh, packing up the right bits and pieces in the right shape for the output. So always work in that style. Unpack at the top, pack at the bottom, build the actual calculation in the middle. Uh, so for things like uh, add with carry, uh, where uh, you've got two four-bit numbers coming in, and you've got to group them uh, into by place value, right? Imagine, I mean, you can, it's bad enough when you draw it on a piece of paper. Um, trying to draw it in ASCII art would be an absolute nightmare. So for goodness sake, name those bits, and then you don't have to draw wires to get them where you want them. Okay, is that something useful? I'm not going to do that with carry for you, because hey, that's the fun one. Um, but, uh, I mean, it looks a lot like rotate left, except that there's a more interesting calculation uh, in, the, in the middle uh, that, uh, that makes use of, uh, of full adders to do a kind of ripple carry adder thing that you know how to do. Um, okay. So, that's enough of that. I'm going to put my computer away now.